I'm Adam Harrington, and today I want to show you really briefly some morel mushrooms associated with tulip trees, Liriodendron tulipifera. This is a tulip tree right behind me. This is a good tree to look for if you want to find morel mushrooms. Today's no exception. I'm finding a lot of morel mushrooms under this tree, that tree, the tree over there. I'm going to show you in one second. Now, this is one of the trees that I discussed in a recent morel mushroom video where I talked about tree identification. I talked about elm trees, apple trees, and tulip trees. And there's a reason I talked about those three, especially this tree right here, because you find morel mushrooms under these trees. Now I came to this spot, I've never actually been here looking for morel mushrooms. I decided to just check it out. I didn't even know if there were tulip trees. And I put in about an hour and a half of work before I actually found morel mushrooms. And after about maybe 45 minutes to an hour, I did spot some tulip trees. They caught my eye immediately, and I immediately went to those areas. Rather than just walking through the woods, hoping to find morel mushrooms, I decided to use my tree identification skills, locate the tulip trees, go to those spots, and search around them. Now, about an hour ago, I was at another spot up the hill. I'm actually closer to the road right now. That's why you're hearing a lot of cars go by. I was in another spot, a lot of large tulip trees, but I only found one morel mushroom, and it was kind of past its prime, so I just left it there. And I decided to look around some more. And on my way out, I found another stand, a nice concentration, maybe an acre or two of tulip trees. And almost immediately, I found some morel mushrooms under these ones. And so I'm gonna pull off the camera in a second, and I'm gonna show you the morel mushrooms that I'm finding under these tulip trees. So this is the tulip tree that I was just sitting under. Notice its size. It's a rather large tree. It's probably the largest tree in the shot right now. And tulip trees are pretty large. It's one of our largest trees here in Pennsylvania, as far as deciduous trees go. Also notice that it's very tall and does not branch out until you get very, very high up. So right there's the first branch, and then it really branches out in the canopy. So it's a very tall and straight tree that does not branch out until you get very high up. Also notice the bark pattern. It's got ridges and fissures, definitely not smooth. And it's kind of yellowish to some degree, and that's why they refer to it as the yellow poplar tree. And this plot of woods right here has a lot of these trees. But not all of them have morel mushrooms. This one does, and so let me show you a few morel mushrooms associated with this one right here. So there's our first morel mushroom. It's not the first one that I saw, but it's the first one that I'm showing you. A nice specimen right there. So here's my hand for comparison. Definitely a morel mushroom. Prime stage for harvesting. Doesn't look to be buggy at all. I could probably wait a couple days, but I'm also risking somebody else coming here and eating it. <laughs> and that could be an animal as well. But right behind it is another morel mushroom. I don't know if you could see it underneath those sticks. I'll bring the camera over. And this one's interesting because it's bent in the cap. It doesn't mean it's bad, it's just a stick is resting on it. So this one did not grow, I don't want to say properly, but it just didn't grow in the same way that other mushrooms typically grow. So that's a nice one right there. Now, one thing I have to be careful of is poison ivy. There is a lot of poison ivy around here. I don't know if you can see that with the three leaves coming out. That's poison ivy right here. These woods are actually loaded with poison ivy. And so I probably wouldn't even be able to walk through here in a couple months from now. But right now I can, and I just gotta be mindful of the poison ivy. There's some actually right in front as well, right there. So if you're sensitive to poison ivy, just be careful when you're trying to harvest morel mushrooms. So are there any other morel mushrooms around here? Well, yes. So I'm gonna walk around this tree. We'll come back to the other tree in a second. But notice, this is another tulip poplar tree right here. So notice that it looks almost exactly the same as that other tulip tree. Nice and tall and straight, and it's branching way up there. Same bark pattern as well, kind of yellowish hues. And if we come over here, right behind these geraniums, it's a nice morel mushroom back there. A bit discolored in there, but it's still good for harvesting. And it's really hard to see from the other angle, so I had to walk around here just to find this one. So whenever you find a morel mushroom, definitely look around the tree and look from all angles as well. So here's a nice small one right there. This one's nice and tiny. If we come back over here, there's a nice morel mushroom right there. 
And there should be one more. Let's see if you could spot it over there. We'll walk up to it. There's a nice morel mushroom right there. All great sizes for harvesting. So these are all associated with those two tulip trees. And there are a lot of tulip trees around here. Most of these large trees that you see are all tulip trees. So notice this kind of environment. Not a lot of conifer trees here, mostly tulip trees. This is definitely what you want to look for when you're looking for morel mushrooms associated with tulip trees. So let's keep walking around here and see if we can find another patch of morel mushrooms. So here's another tulip tree. There are lots of them in these woods. If we take a look around, we can see some of these larger trees, all tulip trees. But this one in particular looks almost exactly the same as those other two trees that we talked about. It doesn't branch out until you get very high up. Same bark pattern, nice and tall and straight. And no surprise, it has some morel mushrooms associated with it. There's one right back in there. Hard to see if you're just walking from the top, you don't get down low, you might not see it. But if you crawl around on your knees a little bit, push away some of this leaf litter, it becomes much easier. And right behind it, there's another one over there. Framed perfectly in between all of that poison ivy. So I'm gonna have to be very creative to get that one out. It won't be too hard, but I just have to be mindful. Then the other side, I actually didn't see these at first. I just saw these a couple minutes ago. There's one in there, geranium. That one won't hurt me if I touch it. And one right there alongside the log. Can you see that one? I'll bring the camera a little bit closer. So right there. Now I didn't see any more than this. These are the only ones that I saw so far. But that's not too bad for about an hour and a half of looking around the woods. So before I wrap up, I want to mention four things, four key points that I kind of discussed throughout this video. Number one, I put in a lot of work and time before I found this particular patch of morel mushrooms. I didn't just roll out of my car and find them. This was a new spot, so it was going to take some time. And I was going to be okay if I didn't find any morel mushrooms either. I could have given up after that first morel mushroom that I found up on the hill about two, three hundred yards up there, but I didn't. I had some extra time. I decided to look a little harder and it proved successful. So I didn't give up, that's number one. Number two, just because I found them under tulip trees and I found them under a few tulip trees, doesn't mean that I found them under every single tulip tree. So even if you're in the right habitat, at the right time, right season and everything, right trees, doesn't mean you're gonna find your morel mushrooms. If you don't find them under one tree, keep looking under the other trees. Not every tree produces morel mushrooms. Number three, all of these tulip trees are living trees. They're not dead trees, they're not dying trees. These are really, really healthy trees. When you're looking for elm trees, you're looking for the dying elm trees. With the apple trees, you're kind of looking for the ones that are on their way out as well, at least in my experiences. With the tulip trees, you're looking for the living ones. Number four, you're looking for the tall tulip trees as well. This is a really big specimen right here. I'm not looking for the saplings. I'm not looking for the five-year-old tulip trees. I'm looking for the large tulip trees. So all those key points, add them together, and you may have a successful morel mushroom season. Now, it's not easy finding these morel mushrooms, especially if this is your first year. It's not the easiest mushroom to find. It's really fun to go out there and look for them. But if you don't find them, that's okay. You know, you could still appreciate the wildflowers that are out here. You could still appreciate the trees. You're breathing clean air, and you're not wasting a day in the woods whatsoever. So get out there, see if you can find morel mushrooms, and please don't forget to enjoy the process and enjoy the hunt. Thanks for watching, take care.